we've got to mill out this blue section um, maybe one mil deep doesn't matter the depth we've got choices to make about how we actually perform the operation here's our cutter and I've got two options here one option is I can start at this end with the cutter and I can move the work towards the cutter or I can start with the cutter at this end and I can move the work in that direction towards the cutter and it's a classic example of climb milling versus conventional milling how do we determine which one we're using and which one is the best to use in this particular circumstance probably need to have a closer look at the cutter so to make it clear what we've got here is a large comedy version um, of the base of the cutter we've got the three cutting edges here um, and we can you might just be able to make out we've got a black background and we've got shiny edges on here which is the actual cutting face we can also see if we turn the machine on we can see that the direction of rotation is looking down upon the cutter always in a clockwise direction so we can see that the cutting is taking place on this edge and we know which way the machine is turning so let's look at our options as to how we could actually perform the cut okay here we are set up um, in this instance our material is going to be moving towards the back of the machine in this direction as we produce our cut get back to the starting point and let's see what happens when the cutter actually starts to cut so the cutter will rotate in a clockwise direction and as we can see the first point that the cutter is going to make contact with will be the outside edge and it will actually take a reasonably large cut once it makes contact and that cut will actually sweep down and get lesser and lesser until it gets to the finish point when it's on the edge of our blue line and it'll only be taking a very small cut we will be moving the material in this direction so we can imagine that this is swinging round and it is making a cut as we move this is climb milling this has some advantages um, one of the key advantages to climb milling is because the cut starts on the outside of the material and sweeps inwards the actual amount of burring that we get produced on the cut is relatively small sometimes you can take a piece out and there are no external burrs on the finished cut which can be very advantageous the real issue we have with this is we lose so much rigidity so what is happening while we are moving the material in this direction is the amount of backlash that we may have on our machine and there will always be some um, will be free to be moved by the cutter so the cutter comes in it makes contact and what it's doing is it's pushing the whole job towards the back and because we're pushing it towards the back the backlash is not taken up backlash is taken up on the opposite side where we're pushing it so what can happen is the work can jump in this direction as the cutter comes in it pushes it back that way which means the job will grab um, sometimes it will actually move it out the vise and it can cause problems to surface finish it can even pull the material up out of the vise so although climb milling is useful and can be done even on a small mill like this it's not practical for taking large cuts perhaps really really light finishing cuts but in general i would tend to avoid it unless you've got an extremely modern very very rigid machine that has virtually zero backlash so what about conventional milling conventional milling is just a question of starting in the other direction so to cut this little groove i have here on the piece of brass i will start with the material at the back of the machine so now bring that in as our cutter is turning what it will do as we bring this in 
is it will make contact and it will remove material towards the outside edge. It's still pushing the material in this direction with every cut. However, because we are pulling the material in this direction, all of the backlash has been taken out. This is constantly under load being pulled in towards the cutter, which means it doesn't matter how hard the cutter comes in, there is no movement. We have much, much greater rigidity with this setup. So the key to identifying it is very, very simple. We need to ensure with every cut that we can visualize where our cutting edge is, which here we would be able to see the screw coming down here, the helix coming down, and then we have the flat edge on the end of the cutter, which we have here. That's going to be turning in towards the material. And as the cutter turns in towards the material, the material is being fed in the opposite direction. So we are always feeding material in to the cutter as it rotates. And that will be conventional milling. If we need to do it on this side, we need to machine another slot on the opposing side. We would have to move the cutter right the way across. Sorry, no power feed. Good exercise. And now if we look, if I now start cutting from this same position, so the material is moving this way, the cutter is actually moving in the same direction and I'm climb milling. So in order to cut the same groove on this side, I need to start at the back of the material So now, while my cutter is turning, and the cutter is moving in this direction, in this instance it's moving towards me, I'm now going to feed the material in to the cutter. And that will give us conventional milling. So the key to remembering is, find out the position of the cutting edges on the cutter and always ensure that if the cutter is coming towards you you are pushing the material away from you you are always pushing your material into the cutting edge they should always be moving in the opposite direction that's kind of the difference between identifying conventional and climb milling it does take a little bit of practice it does take a bit of time to get your head around it. But if you can visualize the setup, if you can visualize exactly what the cutter looks like, write down where it's going to make contact, then you can easily identify how you need to set it up so that the material is feeding in to that cutter as it rotates round.